Are you a furry? Do you enjoy playing characters with rage abilities that allow you to do stuff that would normally kill you otherwise? Do you just love those moments where the seemingly weak and frail individual ends up becoming the most deadly monster in the entire battlefield? If you said yes to any of my inquiries, I have the character for you. How Yin's doing, I'm an Ian, and this is the Streets of Rogue Character Guide to the Werewolf. I understand you were a human once, but you were once called... Don't you say that name! Don't you say it! Stephen. <laughs> Strong Fang now! First of my name! My power knows no bounds! I can even almost blow myself! Watch! Oh my. For those of you who have not yet unlocked the werewolf character yet, you can do so via killing a ghost. You'll need a ghost giver gun to do this, however. I recommend playing the scientist character if you intend to do this, since they're the only starting character barring customs that start with this weapon. As for your character's backstory, it reads... Up until this point, the werewolf has only used the powers for two things. Winning high school basketball games, and two, viciously mauling people. The werewolf does not consider either of these things to be a worthwhile use of their time, and feels like their life is stuck in a rut. Thanks to the resistance, they'll hopefully be able to use their powers for some good, all while having a howlingly good time. Moving on to your starting allocations, you start with a ham sandwich as your sole starting item in your inventory. Useful for it topping off your health or just keeping you alive in the heat of things, but generally speaking, a lackluster healing item. Still, it makes the loadout o matics useful for something at least. And free healing's free healing, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth, people. As for your starting traits, you have antisocial, meaning that until you can afford to remove this trait at an augmentation booth, you'll be forced to do everything solo without the help of anyone whatsoever. The sole exception to this is if you're playing co-op with friends, since the people you're playing with in co-op don't count as followers, but just extra players. Moving back to the starting traits you have, you have the sucker trait. This trait makes it so that shopkeepers will charge you more for their items. This naturally means that any plans you had of visiting an augmentation booth to remove your negative traits like antisocial will be that much harder since medkits now cost more. The last trait you have to start with is Skinny Nerdlinger. This trait increases the knockback you receive. Whether this is from you getting hit by a baseball bat or recoil from the guns you're shooting, it doesn't really matter. Either way, this trait will amplify that amount of pushback you receive. Combine this with the fact that all of your starting stats start at the lowest possible number of 1, You'll quickly find that where other characters will see a machine gun to kill your foes, you'll see an escape pod to run away from your enemies with. This is because the skinny Nerdlinger trait amplifies the recoil you get from your guns, meaning that a machine gun will actually propel you forward by pointing it in the opposite direction you wish to go in shooting than your abysmal ones in starting speed. These horrible traits in starting allocations is to balance out your special ability, your werewolf transformation. When you use this ability, you'll don your fursona for the next 15 seconds and become a bloody monster when engaged in combat. Please keep in mind that if you press the same key you use to transform, you'll end up doing a lunge forward, which can be a useful gap closer since when you're transformed into a werewolf, the only weapons you can use are your fists. This means that most melee weapons are generally quite useless on the werewolf, since realistically, if you plan to be going into a melee fight, you're going to do so while using your werewolf transformation ability. This is not only because you regenerate your health for killing people while transformed into a werewolf. No, the real benefit of the werewolf transformation ability is that your speed and melee get boosted up to 8 and 6 respectively. This is quite the considerable buff when you realize that the normal in-game cap for your attributes is 4. This means when you're in your fursona, you'll actually end up be moving faster and hitting harder than anything else in the game. However, since with the exception of healing items, you can't really use items whatsoever when you're transformed into a werewolf, melee weapons, as a rule of thumb, are completely useless to you, and should only be picked up for two reasons. One, to ensure that NPCs don't pick them up and use them against you, and two, as sacrificial fodder to the Celomatic. Firearms are slightly more useful since they allow your skin Sona to have an escape tool for when your first Sona is on cooldown because your fursona has a 20 second cooldown, so don't go thinking that you can just run around in a furry suit all the damn time. More importantly, when your transformation wears off, you end up becoming inflicted with the crazy dizzy status effect for 5 seconds. 
Crazy Dizzy is different from regular Dizzy in the sense that if you take damage whatsoever while Crazy Dizzy, you won't snap out of your dizziness like you would with regular dizziness. This means if you end up starting a fight as a werewolf and then your transformation runs out mid-fight, you're gonna have 5 seconds where they can just wail on you without you being able to do jack shit about it. Thankfully, however, your werewolf transformation follows the same principles as Superman putting on his super suit. So long as no one sees you transition between your two states of being, no one will realize they're the same person. This means as long as you make sure to keep track of how much longer you have to stay in your fursona and run into a bathroom or something to hide to make sure that once the effects wore off no one sees you, you can effectively stay hidden from the consequences of your actions. Also bear in mind that while you are buffed to high hell whilst transformed and are able to heal from killing people and are drastically more durable and stronger in every conceivable way in a head-on fight, you're not indestructible and you don't get any health from transformation whatsoever. So if you're low on health, don't go thinking that the super cops can be used as a health pack, especially if they're surrounded by other police officers who can shoot at you. We have lots of guns and we will shoot you with all of them. Every single one. Interestingly, the crazy dizzy effect you get from leaving your fursona makes it so that the longer status effect trait becomes something of a double-edged sword, since while it does increase the time you can stay in your transformed state, it will also increase the duration of the crazy dizzy status effect. Please keep in mind that when you're transformed into a werewolf, you're stuck in something of a combat-only mode, making it so that talking to NPCs, operating computers, or really anything that isn't just violently destroying everything in sight is pretty much impossible for you with the exception of using the exit elevator. Thankfully, however, you won't need to do anything other than murder as many people as possible in order to complete your big quest. Speaking of which, let's move on to that. Your big quest is called Satiate That Bloodlust, where you must kill five NPCs in a single transformation. This is a pretty straightforward and easy to understand quest in all honesty, just find five NPCs clustered together and then transform and kill them all before they have a chance to react. If you remember to use the lunge ability you get while transformed, this should be a trivial endeavor as long as you remember to transform in range of five different NPCs. In other words, make sure you transform after you found five NPCs to kill in your werewolf form, not before. Otherwise, you're going to have some trouble hunting down the individuals you need to kill before the transformation wears off. A few tips before closing out. Firstly, werewolves won't spawn naturally in the game whatsoever unless someone playing co-op with you picked the vampire as part of their big quest. As a result of this, traits like no infighting will be borderline useless to you unless you have plans of cloning the crap out of yourself in a cloning booth. Secondly, I must reiterate that the werewolf transformation makes you incapable of using most items. This means if you want to do something crazy, like using a gigantizer to buff yourself during a fight, you're going to want to do that before you activate the transformation ability. It's sort of like Shroud in Magic the Gathering. Lastly, remember that the health on kill you get while transformed as a werewolf doesn't actually care whether or not the kill came from you mauling people to death or from other means. This means if you place explosives and rig them to blow while you're transformed, such as from a time bomb, those killed by a said time bomb will heal you just the same as those you killed with your bare fists. So long as you were transformed during the detonation, that is. All in all, I give the werewolf a one-trick pony out of ten. With this character, you have a powerful werewolf transformation to work with and your ability to enjoy this character will be entirely dependent on whether or not you can get good mileage out of this ability. That's all for now though, like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one, comment what characters you want to see me cover in the future, I've been an Ian, you have been you, and this has been the Streets of Rogue Character Guide to the Werewolf, and stay tuned to the Shapeshifter is coming up next.